Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working with Apple series. My name is Carl Pauline and this week I'm going to explain to you what Apple's iOS Files app is all about because this is one area where I have received a lot of questions. Basically, what's the difference between iCloud and files that you get on your iOS device, whether that's the iPad or the iPhone. So that's what I'm going to show you this week. Now, before we go any further, I would just like to say if you do get any value from this episode, then please help me by clicking on that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using Apple's productivity tools, then please subscribe to my channel. OK, let me take you into my iPad now and I'm going to show you everything you really need to know about using Apple's Files app. OK, so here I am in Apple's Files application. Now, just for those of you who are very new to Files, Files is an icon, as you can see down here in my menu bar. And if you tap on that, that's what you get. This is what you get. Now, the reason why I want to do this is to really just explain why Files and iCloud are very different applications. They are not the same thing. As you can see down here, if we go to the left hand side of the screen, so if we go over here, you can see that I actually have iCloud Drive and that is because iCloud Drive is a separate application. You can't download the application itself. You control iCloud Drive from your settings, which is a completely different video. But what Files does is it brings together all your cloud storage facilities together if you like. So I've got a Google Drive account which is here. I've got a OneDrive account which I very 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 rarely use. I'm also an Adobe Creative Suite uh, subscriber so I have a, a Creative Cloud account which I don't think obviously I use. And then we have something called On My iPad. Now this is for documents that you've downloaded from the internet or you've downloaded from other places that you want to just keep on your iPad alone. So this is not going to be in the cloud. Anything that's on my iPad is just just like it would be on a physical drive, let's say a physical drive, but a drive or a folder on your computer that's not connected in any way to a cloud service. It's just on that computer. It's not on any other server or cloud storage. And that's essentially what it is. So what Files does is it brings together all your cloud drives into one place. So you can then access all your documents, all your files directly from this one application rather than having separate apps for Google Drive or OneDrive. Now you can do that if you wish. There's no reason why you, you know, you cannot do that. In fact, if I go, maybe, I don't know if I do, but I do, I have a Google. Well, I do have Microsoft here. And as you can see, I do have OneDrive here on Microsoft. However, I never really use that because I generally just use what's in files because it's just so convenient to go straight to OneDrive basically um, if I'm using OneDrive it's just so much easier to go directly to my OneDrive account in files everything is there now one of the best things I like about files is this section here recent so these are all the documents that I've been working on in the last few weeks days I don't know how far back this goes actually a long way so everything that I've been working on over the last few weeks is all right here and so I can just quickly anything that I've worked on on my computer for example I don't use these reports that I keep here uh, on my computer I just don't use this sort of thing on my sorry I should say iPad I only ever use this on my uh, computer but they're here if I need it if I'm away from my desk and I'm out in the coffee shop which I can't do at the moment they are all there I can just go straight to those documents I've even got uh, screenshots and text that I've done this is actually a, a, a Photoshop document this is a PDF this is a numbers file this is a pages file this is a screenshot uh, I've got so many things right here that I can just get straight access to 
directly from my recents. I love that. Shared documents are all kept here. Anything that I've shared for other people, right here. I can get into my shared documents. Everything that I need is right here in files. It's like the go-to place. If I'm working on multiple devices, whether it's my phone, my computer, I can just open it up directly from files. And of course, this is exactly the same on your iPhone if you're using iPhone. So this is why files is very different. It's not iCloud. And that's the big thing I really want to stress. iCloud is a separate thing altogether. And that's why you have it as a location in your files document. Now, by the way, if you the way to get these into your files is quite simple. If you actually just have any cloud service set up, if you have your Google services set up and your Microsoft services set up, it automatically comes in. But you can actually turn them on and off. If I go to here, edit sidebar, I can turn these on or off. So for example, Creative Cloud, I've got nothing in there, so I can just remove that. I've also got Adobe Document Cloud, which comes part of the service. So once I click done, you'll see that these have now disappeared. I can just manage my what devices are showing up in here and what are not. You can also, by the way, just so that you know, you can scan documents directly into your files from here. That's just all saved there. And I say anything that you save from the web, you can actually just decide when you hit the share sheet, you can decide exactly what you want to save and where you save it. And this is where you will find those documents. So there you go. That's a quick overview of files and how files work. It's a tremendous app. And if you're not using it, I'd, st I'd just suggest that you go in and have a look and see what you can do. There's some amazing stuff that you can do. And you can actually do all sorts of things. You can actually change this to a list of you if you wish. There's ways, oh, I prefer the uh, that way. Or you can even now go into columns and you can have it set up as columns right here. There's so many different things that you can do. I prefer the icons in this way. You can go, you can add folders. So directly, again, if I go to Google Drive, you can see I can actually add a folder in my Google Drive. And if I then ch choose to share something, save something, I can actually pick stuff up from there. Uh, I can multiple select and delete. It's just a tremendous tool that you can use. It's absolutely fantastic. You can also add favorites here. So I'm going to just click done. I can also add things to my favorites right here. I've got my downloads. So I've, these are stuff that I've actually downloaded um, onto my iPad. So these are actually they're in the cloud here, um, but they're on my actual computer. So you can actually add stuff to your favorites right there and you can actually change that. I can move favorites if I edit the, the, the sidebar. For example, edit the sidebar. Yeah, I can move these things around uh, in, within these locations. So it's just a really, really good tool to use if you want to get the most out of using your iPad. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching this episode. And it just remains for me now to wish you all a very, very productive week. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. Now, if you want to take your Apple productivity systems to the next level, and you want to bring in your calendar, your reminders, your iCloud and your Apple Notes all together into one beautiful productivity system, then please take a look at my Create Your Own Apple Productivity System course. It's completely updated for Mac OS Big Sur and iOS 14 and it's readily available now. All you need to do is pop over to my learning center, get yourself enrolled, and within about 90 minutes to two hours, you're gonna have yourself the know-how to build your very own Apple productivity system. I hope you join me in this course. This course now includes how to set up the Apple system using the Time Sector system, so you get a modern day time management system fit for the world that we live in today and the world that we're probably about to move into next year in 2021, 2022. Okay, thanks very much for watching this video and I really do hope you join me in this course.